What's up YouTube, Adele here from Zephyr, and today I am bringing you an update to zombies involving the Horus engine. Now the Horus engine is actually incredibly good for the deck because it does give you that ability to send additional cards from the hand and then send the Horus monsters from the deck to the grave while giving you instant access to rank 8s in the form of zombie vampire but also giving you instant access to other monsters just to enable you to help the OTK play or help you with some synchro plays as well. So with all of that out of the way please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. So we're going to dive headfirst into the profile, show you what we've got, and explain why we've got it. So we're going to start off with Unizombie at 3. Now this is the main normal summon of the deck. Technically its effect to send from the hand isn't as important, because that's what you're going to want your Horus monsters to do, and what you're going to want the King Sark to do. It's more so the ability to send a card from deck to the graveyard. Now unfortunately on his own, just sending one monster from deck to the graveyard is not going to be enough with Unizombie, so you do need Unizombie and other cards, but like I said, this is the main normal summon of the deck. The punk cards themselves, in my opinion, are a supporting engine. I don't want them to be a main engine, which is why when you see the ratios I play, uh, I'm only playing one of each of them, and then obviously I'm relying on three of the e telly to kind of act as my special summon. Triple Necro World Banshee, now this at 3 is absolutely must have in this version of the deck in my opinion, if not normal versions of the deck as well, just because of course you can send it from deck to grave with Uni Zombie, gives you access to your zombie world, but also being able to send this from the hand off of your um, Horus monsters can be incredibly important because you will then get more instant access to zombie world, which is what really makes the deck tick. Uh, and then of course we've got Troll Mizuki, one of the is issues previously was having Mizuki stuck in the hand and ways of getting it to the graveyard, and that's of course where Uni Zombie comes into play, but that's also where Horus comes into play, because as soon as you've got the King Sark set up, getting to a Mizuki or opening up Mizuki is not that bad, because you just foolish barrel it or send it from the hand, and then you send a Horus monster from deck to the graveyard. So not only are you going to be bringing back the Horus monsters anyway, but you also have the ability of using Mizuki to bring back the other monsters that you may need. Especially with Zombie World in play, that can then lead you into any of your Zombie Link monsters, while also leading you into some of your Zombie Synchro plays, and also being able to lead you into just generic plays and generic rank plays as well. Then for the one-offs, we've got the one Gozuki, the one Destrudo, the one Glart Bloom, followed by the one Border Rock and the one Chenshi, Mad Mola, and Plague Spreader Zombie. So obviously the reason we've got a lot of one-offs here is because obviously your Chanshi is obviously the ability to be able to send a zombie from deck to grave, as well as the hand to grave as well. Glart Bloom, when you've got a field to active, sending this through King Sark, sending it off of Imseti, off of anything else really will then give you instant access to your Border Rock. Keep in mind that the Border Rock is a level eight, so that can be very easy rank eight fodder. As long as you detach it, it's gonna come back during the next standby phase anyway. Uh, and then of course, Plague Spreader Zombie, getting that into the graveyard or Mad Mauler can be free summons back. Keep in mind with Mad Mauler as well, is as long as it has a level six or higher monster on the board, which all of your Horus monsters are, you reduce them by two to make them a level six, and then you bring back the Mad Mauler. Now you do need to be a little bit careful, because more times than not, some of your monsters are gonna require zombie tuners, but then the rest of them will require non-tuners, which is why we do focus on stuff like Cypher and Order Mega as well, but keep in mind when Mad Mauler is on the board, you can only go into zombies, which is why we're also still playing the uh, Dragon Felground as well, because that's gonna be your ideal go-to level eight, off of the back of the Mad Mauler and a Horus monster, um, but you do need to kind of keep in mind when you're adapting these levels that you then can't make your rank climbs or anything else. But the idea is just Mad Mauler being able to come back is great. As long as you've got another Horus monster on the board as well, that can be an instant synchro level 10. So, giving you loads of options. For the Horus cards, of course, Triple Mseti, this is the most important, which is why it's also the most expensive. Uh, this is the one that gets you King Sark, gets you the draw, foolishes from your hand as well. Um, it's really, really powerful, and like I said, it's the reason it's the most expensive of all of them. Yes, you could play this on a little bit of a budget, and what I mean by that is if you really like the idea of the Horus engine, the budget of this build can very easily be the one blessing, the one guidance, and then you can also play um, the one protection. The best thing about playing these as well is the fact they're all different attributes. They don't really get hit by the dark attributes of stuff like Beasties. Now, I'm not playing protection in this build, um, but then of course, if you aren't playing or relying on the Msetis and you don't have those, King Sark, you would then max out at three. 
I feel two is great for this version just because even if you hard open it, it's still a great way of being able to foolish your zombies from the hand as well as then getting a horse monster from the deck to the graveyard. So you're getting a two for one, which is exactly what you want with this deck, is you're getting stuff like Mizukis out of your hand, your Necro World Banshees, and then you're being able to also send a horse monster from deck to the graveyard. The reason we've gone with two, because if you hard open it without an Imseti, it's not the end of the world. If you open up one, but you also open up an Imseti as well, you still have a way of getting Imseti to the graveyard, and you have a fullback, should your opponent get rid of the first King Sark, you have a second one to fall back on. So like I said, if you wanted to play this on a budget option, but you still really like the Horus engines, I would take out the free Imseti, and I would replace that with one protection and then a third King Sark. Um, heck, you could even bump up your Guidance, I wouldn't really bump up the Blessing as much, um, but the idea is that you just want more level 8s to get to the graveyard. Uh, and then for the Punk Engine, of course, we've got the one Z-Armin, the one Deer Note, and the one Foxy Tune. Like I said at the start, I don't want this to be my normal summon of the deck at all. I want it to only ever come off the back of Emergency Teleport, uh, and then that's going to allow me to extend further forward. It's even better when it comes off of E-Telly as well, because it means you can normal summon something like Uni Zombie. It can then get hit with an Imperm or an Ash or something that stops it and negates it, and then you can follow up with an E-Telly and then hopefully allow you to push for Link Plays as well. We've then got a two zombie world. I just feel more comfortable with two zombie world and three banshee, especially in this build like here, where I've got no issue putting the banshees to the graveyard. Uh, it can get a little bit sucky in the grind game if your, uh, your opponent is constantly targeting your zombie world and getting rid of it. So if they get rid of two, then you are falling back on the Horus monsters to be your OTK machine. Uh, one foolish burial. One Reasoning, which as I mentioned in my previous build, Reasoning is basically a Foolish Burial for the deck anyway, because you play loads of different levels. Yes, okay, calling 8 might be the most consistent way of your opponent getting one of them to the graveyard, but when you look at your level 8s that could possibly hit the graveyard, you're looking at 5 Horus Monsters and then 1 of the um, Border Rock, which you don't mind having in the graveyard anyway, so it just acts as an additional Foolish Burial. Uh, we've then got Triple Super Poly, so probably one of like, the best board breakers, a great card for going first and second. Of course you can play Forbidden Droplet if you wanted to in the main deck, which could be a very good board breaker. But what I liked about Super Poly is for the ability, or one of the very few decks alongside Lero Darkness, that can control your opponent's board. So there's a very, very rare occurrence, or very few games where Super Poly wouldn't be relevant to you if you're able to complete your combo. Now, obviously, if you're, not, if you're not able to complete your combo, it's not going to be as great. You could fall back more so on having more generic Super Poly targets in, or, of course, you can take the Super Poly out completely, or you could also replace it with Rivalry of the Warlords, which is a very good control option for the deck. But what I liked about Super Poly is the ability for it being a really good go-first card and a really good go-second card as well. So it gives you that balance of what you may need. Uh, and then for the final hand traps, we've got Triple Ash Blossom and Triple Imperm. Uh, personally, I feel Imperm might be a little bit stronger this format just because of the amount of talents um, and frost now running around. More so talents because of the reprint from the rarity set. So if anything, you could arguably play free Imperm and then cut the ashes for um, droplets. However, the job of what Ash does is just so unique, which is why it's in 99.999% of deck lists, in my opinion. Not just zombies, just deck list in general, um, so you do need to kind of respect those cards that Ash does come up against, and you do need to run that risk of, if they've got a talent, they've got a talent. Um, worst case scenario, they look at your hand, your hand can pretty much be a good place where you're like, yeah, I don't mind any of this being shuffled back, uh, and then go again the next turn. So that's it for the main deck, it is a 42 card deck, I'm still trying to fine tune it down a little bit to get rid of the last two cards, but I wanted to maintain the essence of the zombies while also increasing their consistency as well as not losing a, um, a fail safe button in the form of the punk engine as well. So moving on to the extra deck for our Super Poly Targets, at the moment we are only playing two of the Draco Necro Neville Soul Dragon. Um, you can of course add more to it, the only other target that we are playing is the Dracus Depelia. Just because you can technically upgrade your Never Soul Dragon into a Dracutus Pelia, but this can very easily be your generic target. If you wanted to, of course, you could take out one of the Never Soul Dragons and put in a Starving Venom. Um, but then I feel that you you have less targets to control. Like if your opponent is not playing Darks and they're all playing Fires because of Fire Kings, you can't go into Starving Venom. But with Zombie World, you can still go into Never Soul Dragon, so you'd always have a target for it. Uh, for the Link Monsters, pretty much the same Link Monsters I played in my previous build. So the Unioko, oh, Yoko Uno, Vampire Fascinator, and then Vampire Sucker, alongside the one SP Little Knight. Um, if you don't have access to SP Little Knight, you can fall back on something like Typhoon, or that's where your other Super Poly target comes into play with stuff like Garura Wings of Resonant Life and everything else. 
for the XYZs, I've gone with the one zombie vampire, and then ridiculously, the one number 90 Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. This is at a stupidly high price right now. The only reason it's in here is because obviously the Horus can make it, and then all of my plays going forward after just using Imseti discarding a Horus, or Imseti get me to King Sark, King Sark send a monster from my hand to the graveyard, send a Horus monster from deck to the graveyard, make Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, I'm protected from Nib going forward. So it's a very good protective option. We do get this as a reprint in, I believe, it is the Battles of Legend Rarity Collection, or like collection, which is um, basically what they did with Hidden Arsenal and what they did with the Legendary Duelist. They're doing it again with the Battles of Legend. So this is getting reprinted in there. Heck, it could even get reprinted as the same rarity or a higher rarity. Um, so do not rely heavily on this. Um, yeah, you could risk it and try and go for the Zombie Stein. Zombie Stein isn't going to be as protective because it can't stop Nibiru, um, but it can give you a couple of other options as well. You could risk it and go for Coach King Giant Trainer, but I don't feel that's as consistent. Uh, then for the Synchros, of course, we've got the one Immortal Dragon, the one Necro Dragon, the one uh, Dragon Lord, followed by Omega, Felgrand, and then, of course, Mac Daddy, One Punch, Psychic End Punisher. So that's pretty much it for the list. Very straightforward on the extra deck. Like, uh, what I like about the extra deck is they do, they does have some flexibilities if you want to go more link focused, more super poly focused, um, more XYZ focused. Now, as I mentioned, I know there is Zombie Fusion, and then there is like, I think it's Zombie Wyvern and another one. They came out in Battles of Legend Crystal's Revenge, I believe. Uh, I never picked them up. I've been trying to find them. And I went to a convention like a couple of weeks ago and I was like, oh, I'll find them at the convention. And I never did. Like, I think I only found one, which is a Wyvern, and it was kind of overpriced. I was like, okay, cool. Um, I do think that's a really kind of cool engine for the deck. It's definitely something you could look into, add into the deck as well. But for now, I feel the Horus engine is such a cool upgrade to the deck. And like I said, there is a budget alternative. And when you look at Yu-Gi-Oh, the reason that so many cards are so expensive is either because they're insanely broken as an individual card or they're just incredibly consistent for any deck they are put in. And unfortunately, the Horus cards, mainly Seti, fall within that category of they are insanely consistent for any deck they get put in, and they're incredibly powerful on their own as well. So, like I said, you can make them a little bit budget, you can get older King Sarks, max out your King Sarks, that then becomes your Foolish Burial for the deck. What you've got to remember is, if Foolish Burial's from the hand, but it can send four cards... Like every single time it can send four cards. You could go like really ham on the Horus Monsters and play like free protection, free guidance. But in all honesty, once you've got them to the graveyard, that's it. That's all you should need. And especially if you're not playing Imseti, like I said, Imseti is the only one that's susceptible to a Beastial. Everything else is only susceptible to a DD Crow. Uh, and the fact they don't activate, they just summon back can be massively helpful in certain matchups as well. Anyway, I hope this has been informative. I hope it's given you a couple of ideas. Like I said, you can make the horse engine a little bit more budget by going with the King Sark. And I'm just repeating myself on this one because I don't want a lot of people going, oh, it's got the horse engine in, that's it, it's trash, I can't play it, it's too expensive. You can play it on a bit of a budget. You just are not going to get the consistency level that you would get if you were playing Imsetis. But if you've already got the rest of the zombie engine and you're like, oh, I like what the Horus deck can do or the Horus engine can add to the deck, I want to try it. You can test it out online with Imsetis before you invest. Or, of course, you just test it out with all the cheaper cards and then go, all right, it does work with just free King Sarks and free others. And I don't mind the lack of consistency of it. I'm going to give it a go. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Do like, comment, subscribe, share. Till next time, as absolutely always, stay safe and, of course, happy dueling.